So this <clears throat> that exists, this body, this mind, these emotions, these thoughts that appear, that we know as existence, are all fueled by desires. It's a desire body. When the baby is born, it has to first, well maybe there's a desire for breath, or maybe breath just comes, but there's certainly a desire for food. And the entity, the baby, knows that desire very closely, <clears throat> without any commentary necessary. And there's a crying out, feed me. The same thing happens in puberty, where there becomes biochemically and emotionally an event which cries out for sexual expression. And throughout these stages there is the crying out for this individual's power and place in the collective. So these are the survival drives that are then fueled by the sexual drives and the personal power drives, all desires. Nothing wrong with them at all. They're just part of this desire body. In certain lifelines, certain lifetimes, there is a, an extraordinary desire that appears. Not the ordinary desires of the organism, but an extraordinary desire. That's the desire to be free. Or the desire to know the truth. This gets translated in different languages and different traditions and different cultures as the desire to be reunited with God or the desire for enlightenment or maybe just the desire for happiness, fulfillment. So everyone in this room has been luckily, blessedly, graced by this desire appearing in your lifetime. This is an extraordinary desire. It's out of the realm of ordinary desires. I know that it has appeared in different degrees. Maybe for some it's just a curiosity. I wonder if it's possible to be happy or reunited with God are enlightened. And with some it's a fire that blazes night and day. But for everyone in this room it is not an ordinary desire. Or you would not have given the time and the money and the attention to being on this retreat. So I accept that as a certainty. And that's the way I will deal with each of you, by accepting that as a certainty. My sole purpose in your life, well, my sole purpose has two aspects. <laughs> And I don't mean soul, S-O-U-L. <laughs> I mean soul as an only. My only purpose in your life has two aspects. One is to fan and encourage and bow to that desire, that extraordinary desire for freedom. And the other is to simply point to where the consummation, the resolution, the goal of that desire is.
There are many other desires, of course, that are offshoots of these basic instinctual desires. And then there are sub-desires of those, so that this word desire becomes very complicated. And in spiritual circles it's usually hated. I mustn't desire. Desire is bad. Desire is an obstacle. Much as once there's the realization of the activity of the mind and the filter of suffering that is the activity of the mind, then the thought arises, the mind is bad, the mind is an obstruction, the mind is horrible, I hate it, I must be done with it. But this is absurd. Don't waste your time hating activity of mind or desires. If you will shift your attention just to those two aspects of our purpose here together, to fan and encourage this extraordinary desire for freedom, for truth, for God, however it's phrased in your mind, and to see where is the resolution of that, to discover where is the consummation of that, where is the goal. Then these thoughts, these other desires, these seeming obstructions to self-realization are seen as they are, nothing nothing in the face of this hugeness, this vastness, this exquisiteness of the truth of who you are, of the truth of the goal of this desire that has arisen in your lifeline, in your lifetime. This retreat here can be seen as somewhat artificial in that we're all gathered here together and your needs are taken care of. But it is this, this seemingly artificial setup, the scaffolding that will be torn down at the end of the retreat, dismantle, this room will be dismantled. Once again, you will have to provide your own meals, your own sleeping quarters. All of that will, all of this will end. But the scaffolding is simply put up so that you can take this time in your lifetime to see what it is you really want. Really, finally, absolutely. When you see what you absolutely want, the relative is not excluded, but it is seen as pointing to that absolute seeking that absolute and then you will see also revealing that absolute. But first, you have the job to see what it is you want. And we will later speak of who wants it. But if you speak of that too soon, you jump over with your mind, the, what's been called in the Western world, the subconscious. And you say, ah, who wants it? No one, no one there. Then why am I suffering? <laughs> so we will use this time to expose whatever has been hidden, whatever latent hidden wants and desires that have gone unexamined, unseen, unverbalized, so that they may be exposed, not to be fixed, 
not to be indulged, not to be denied. In this exposure, there is a possibility of burning in the tendency to indulge them and in the tendency to repress them, these desires of survival and sex and power. In the willingness to expose them to yourself, they can be directly seen as nothing. Directly seen, directly experienced as nothing. Not theoretically. I know you all understand that. Not philosophically. This is not a course in Advaita Vedanta. I'm not an Advaita Vedantist. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm not a Christian. I am who you are. And you are what you desire. Finally, absolutely. <laughs>